G'day everyone. In this video I'm going to be assembling a, a seven minute fuzz and just explaining a few things about it. Um, it's, it's, it's meant for people who want to start building guitar pedals, um, a, an, easy, an easy beginner project. It doesn't really get much easier than a, a, a seven minute fuzz. There's not many components to it. Um, and at the other end you get a, you get a, a, a Baz fuzz type of uh, fuzz sound out of it. There's a few options um, as far as the kit goes. You can add a potentiometer if you want, or you can just leave it off and find your own potentiometer. Um, in, on the, on the uh, web store, you'll see uh, the options there, and you just, ch you just check what, um, what options you want. Just take note, though, that if you want the experimenters kit, you have to get the, the standard components kit um, as well. So make sure you tick the standard components kit and the experimenters kit if you want the experimenters kit. What's an experimenters kit? The experimenters kit comes with a um, a handful of different transistors, capacitors, re uh, resistors, and um, uh, and diodes, so that you and sockets. So you you populate the board with the sockets, and then you can experiment with the uh, input and the output capacitors and the transistors and the diodes, etc., um, and see what effect that has um, when you do that. Which is which is part of building guitar pedals is, is messing around with this sort of stuff. Um, but I, I find a lot of the fun is um, experimenting with them. But in this video I'm just going to be assembling the standard set which is a 10k resistor, a BAT41, an MPSA13 and uh, one microfarad on the input and 100 nanofarad on the output um, or other way around, sorry. Um, and you will, uh, that, that's, that's the one uh, combination that I've found, I've found to sound really good. So I'm going to show you the the whole assembly of the kit so you can see how easy it is and you can also follow along if you buy one as well. So let's get into building it. So as I said before, if you get an experimenter's kit um, you won't be populating the board like I am now. You'll just basically fill um, the capacitor, the two capacitors, the diode, the resistor and the transistor with these sockets so that you can change those components. The potentiometer, don't, don't populate the potentiometer with the sockets because the potentiometer needs to go into it. Um, and the input, output, ground and plus, leave them as well because the, um, the, the wires need to go into those as well. So this is what you get in the standard um, kit. Uh, basically, you can, I forgot to mention too, you can actually order the, the um, PCB on its own as well. You don't have to order it in a kit form. Um, the potentiometer is an option. If you want the potentiometer, you can add it. Um, but this is the standard kit, pretty much everything on that side. Um, you get the wire, uh, the lengths of wire for you to hook it up and test it. Um, a, battery, a battery snap so you can hook it up and test it as well. Um, you get the um, MPSA 13 and the capacitors and the resistor and the diode, as I, as I mentioned before. Um, the two grey ones are the capacitors and the black one here is the transistor, which is the MPSA 13. The big one's the one microfarad, which is um, on the on the bill of materials, which is on the website, um, one microfarad. That's what one microfarad looks like, and 100 nanofarad. That's what the NF is. Um, that's nanofarad, and that's the small one. So it's basically just a matter of looking at the bill of materials and um, just putting, uh, just populating the board because um, the board's got the silk screen on the top there. You can see the white printing. Um, you just populate it um, with the corresponding um, uh, these corresponding numbers. So R1, resistor 1 is 10K, so you just look for R1 on the board and you populate, the, um, you populate that spot with R1. I'll show you how you do that now. As I mentioned in another video, I actually like to um, use BluTAC when I'm, when I'm um, assembling PCBs. I find it easier than, um, than uh, helping hands. Um, just for this little sort of stuff, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to start with the, the resistor first. Get a pair of pliers and just bend down the leads. Just at a right angle like that. And then populate it into R1. So push it through those two, those two holes like that. And then I just place that down, push that down onto the blue tack and then solder in the back. Just be careful when you're soldering. I'm doing this from behind the video camera, which is a, <laughs> which is a new challenge. I haven't done that before. Um, but um, just be careful when you're soldering that you don't um, that you don't connect these pads together. There's also a veer. I'll show you that in a moment. Actually, I'll just I'll just um, while we've got this ready to go, I'll just solder that. So 
you don't need a, a heap of solder, just just enough to connect the um, the lead. I'll show you what the solder joint looks like um, when I've done it. So uh, I'm looking through the video camera again. Looks pretty good through the video camera. So just um, that's the sort of that's the sort of joint that you want to do, and then just use some side cutters and clip off the um, clip off the leads. I was just saying before about the veer. That's a veer there. That little that that little hole there is a veer. Don't worry. You don't need to put anything in that hole. It's just there for uh, double sided convenience, um, basically to get the um, to get the board so small. Okay. So next we'll do the diode. With the diode, you need to be careful that you put it around the right way. Um, as you can see, this is the BAT41. As you can see, there's a black line on the BAT41. Sorry about the focus on this camera. It, um, it doesn't focus very quickly, um, but you can see that black line there. And you can see that on the board, there's a, little, there's a little line to indicate which side that goes. So make sure you put it in that way around. And then solder it in. So with um, C1 and, and C2, they are different, like I said before. You've got two values. The big fat square one is the is the one microfarad, and the small one is the um, 100 nanofarad. And you can actually see that the value on the top 104 is 100 nanofarad, and 105 is uh, 100 uh, is one microfarad. I'll just see if I can get that on the camera there. Not sure if you can see that, but yeah, it's 105 is one microfarad. So just make sure you put them around the right way. So the big one. One microfarad is going into C1. So just push it all the way into the socket. Don't bend the leads down like that. It's not good practice. That's how you can um, get um, uh, uh, solder bridges on the pads. So I've gone ahead and also soldered in the um, 100 nanofarad capacitor as well because it's pretty much the same thing. Um, again, just make sure you put them in the right, um, in the right, in the right spot. And next we'll do the transistor. And the transistor's actually got on the silk screen, shows you which way around um, to put it. One side of the transistor is flat, as you can see, and as you can see on that, it'd actually be around that way. The, um, uh, the silk screen uh, shows you which way to put it in. So that one's in like that. Now, um, we'll put the potentiometer in. This is the potentiometer that comes with the kit if you order it. Um, these little lugs on the back here, little mounting, um, mounting sort of, uh, I think they're mounting lugs pretty much. Just cut them off. You don't need them. So use your use your side cutters and snip them off. There's four. We, we actually, actually, the potentiometer we should do last. Sorry, I forgot to mention. You should wire up your... It's easy to wire, put the wires on first and then the potentiometer um, uh, because the potentiometer sits at the back of the PCB and it makes it a little bit difficult to get in. So we'll do the, um, we'll do the wire first. So I usually use white or black for um, ground. So in this case... Um, I'll use um, white, so put that on ground, and the and the board's got all these um, connections labelled on the board, so um, you can just see G, G and D is obviously ground. Next, we'll put in um, nine volts. Sounds good, and usually use red for that. Doesn't really matter what colour you use. Um, in fact, some of the kits have got a few random colours in there, so just use the colours that will that you can remember what's what, and should probably check. Um, as you as you wire it up anyway to make sure that you're putting the right thing in the right spot. So put the nine volt wire in, and then next we'll put the input. Now you use blue for input again. Doesn't really matter, just as long as you remember which is which. And then the last one is the output. You usually use um, yellow or green for out, output. So now we'll put the potentiometer in, and the potentiometer's got numbers labelled across the top there. You can see one, two, three going across that way. If you look at the front of the potentiometer like this, the the legs are actually one, two, three going from left to right. So in order for this to go into the board, you actually go in the bottom there and just put it through. And it's actually I've actually made the board spaced so that it will just fit straight through. So before attaching the pot to the um, to the PCB, soldering the pot to the PCB, just put a bit of um, double-sided tape on the back of it just to stop it from shorting. Any connections on the back of the um, the back of the PCB, just like that. Cover up that metal plate on the back, and then just push it through. Um, as I was saying before, just push it through so that um, you've got pin one, two, and three all connected up. It doesn't have to go right through. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. Um, the pin, the 
I'll make the pin hole a bit bigger on the next version. Um, it's a bit tight, but just it doesn't have to go through much, just as long as you make the connection um, when you solder it on that side. <clears throat> and then solder it on. So I'll be testing mine the same as you'll be testing yours probably. Um, if you go to um, this page on the um, bill of materials, you'll see testing your effect. That's actually how you need to um, connect it up. So you'll need a um, you need a mono and a stereo, or you can actually just use two monos um, and just connect um, the ring and sleeve, uh, the, the negative from the battery to the sleeve, um, and and leave the ring out. If you use a stereo, when you pull the um, cable out, it'll actually disconnect the battery. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a convenience for you when you're testing it. But you don't need the stereo to test it. Like I said, just connect just connect those two together. And as it turns out, I actually don't have a stereo, so I'll be doing it that way. So I'm just going to blue tack the effect down onto this board here um, while I'm connecting it up. And I usually use alligator clips because uh, soldering it is a bit permanent. And this is actually a Baz Fuzz that I've, that I've built into a 1590A. And if you want to actually put it inside an enclosure, it's best not to solder it. So I'll be, um, I'll be soldering, I'll be uh, connecting it up with um, alligator clips. So it's just a matter of um, logically following the, um, the wiring diagram here. So that's with the effect wired up. Just double check that everything's connected properly if you're having a problem, if you're not getting an output signal. Also make sure that you've put your input and output the right way around. You put the input and the input jack and the output and the output jack because obviously you put them around the wrong way, that's not going to work. Um, and also make sure when you turn your effect on for the first time that your amp is down low, particularly if you've got a powerful amp because if this um, effect is up full, you'll get a big boost out of it and um, yeah, obviously if you're sitting in front of it that's not a good thing. So just make sure that it's turned down um, before you, um, before you uh, turn your amp up. So I'm just going to test mine now. Um, just turn it up a little bit on your effect, um, just like a, a quarter of a turn and um, turn your volume up gently and there's the effect. Let's have a listen to it. Sounds good. Another question I get asked regularly is how do I put that into that? Um, if you want to put your guitar into an enclosure, uh, your guitar pedal into an enclosure, um, that's going to be a whole nother, um, a whole nother video. And in fact, I've already done a video on that, how to, how to wire up a, an effect with offboard wiring. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go into that in this, but I'll leave a link so that you can follow it in case you want to do a bit more research on how to go to the next stage, which is put it inside an enclosure. I'm just going to open mine up now. This is a this is a 1590A enclosure, um, which is a very small enclosure. And if you're new to building guitar pedals, I don't recommend using this size. However, I'm just going to show you on the inside the um, completed board. So that's the completed um, seven minute fuzz at the top there. Um, I'll just get into the light for you so you can see. Um, and as you can see, it's very tight in, in a 1590 and I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. Um, I'd probably go for a 1590B, which is, I'll just grab one. For example, this one, which is, which is a phase, uh, phase 45. Um, that's a 1590B size, and you probably, for your first pedal, you'd be better off going for um, a, a, a pedal of that size, an enclosure of that size. So that's it for the build instructions for the um, 7 minute fuzz. Um, hopefully um, if you've bought one and you, or you're putting one together, um, this video has helped you do it and you've got yourself a working um, 7 minute fuzz. Thanks for buying the kit and for watching the video.